Fibama, Fidoro Sansuchi, Fidoro Sansuchi, Fibama, 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 that you will have to continue chanting all through this country and all throughout the world. People need to know that you are serious about freeing your leader. Can you hear me? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, so what I'm saying to you is that when other people lower their voices, you must be the ones who raise your voice so that everybody without a doubt will know that you want your leader free. You are serious about wanting your amazing leader, Dono San Suu Kyi, free. Not 10 years from now, not five years from now, not one year from now, you want her free now, today, immediately, unconditionally. So when other people's voices start to lower, you have to raise your voice. You have to let them hear you. Don't be afraid to speak out. Don't be afraid to stand up. Don't be afraid to walk. Don't be afraid to talk. We need people all around this state, all around this country, and all around this world, walking in small groups, it doesn't matter if you are five people. It doesn't matter if you are 25 or 100. You can be five people, but your spirit will be so strong that you will sound like a hundred people. If you are five and your spirit is strong, they will say, wow, who was that? Who just passed through our streets? We heard them loud and clear. Free on San Suu Kyi, free Burma. Free Burma, free on San Suu Kyi. Now I want to take a step back and I want to thank God for allowing us to arrive here safely once again. I was here about two years ago with two friends, Jeffrey and Sasha. We had the celebration at the monastery that day in the outside area. I want you to know on behalf of them Sasha is in Europe now, but she is also working on your behalf. And my dear brother Jeffrey, who I think many of you know, he does such tremendous work. He's, at the U he's in New York City today, where they are having a big event in front of the Burmese consulate on East 77th Street. So there are people all over the world now, all over the country, all over the state, meeting, having demonstrations, and honoring this day. Before I forget, I also want to honor my brothers who are walking from Fort Wayne to the UN. I had the honor to walk with them for five days. It felt very good to me because I remember the long march with my dear friend and brother and teacher, Wuhan Lin. Wuhan Lin is no longer with us in the physical body, but his spirit will remain in our hearts always. He was a great friend. I should say he is a great friend, a great brother, and I believe one of the most highly respected and beloved of all the Burmese freedom fighters in the world. So when you say Wuhan Lin, they know who you're talking about. 
because Wu Han Lin was the kind of person that had that kind of spirit that inspired you to get involved. So I hope we will continue to honor our brothers who are walking to the UN and to try to support them in any way they can. I want you to know that I have you in my prayers, brothers, every day. And I also want to honor the Burmese people. Every time you ask me, whether it's here in Utica, whether it's in Washington, D.C., whether it's in New York City, when you ask me to say a few words on your behalf, I want you to know that it's an honor. Because you are my teachers, you are my guides. I'm trying to support you in your struggle. Human rights is very basic. And many people all around the world are trying, are fighting for human rights. So when you say to someone, who is that lady in the picture? And they say, well, I don't know who she is. So you tell them, yes, she is Don Aung San Suu Kyi, the world's only in prison Nobel Peace Prize laureate. That in itself puts her in a very unique position. There is no other Nobel Peace Prize laureate in the world today who is in prison and under house arrest. And when you say that we are walking and that we are standing up and that we are sitting in and that we are talking, trying to support our brothers and sisters in Burma in their struggle for human rights, people understand that. You break it down, you give them one sentence. Don on San Suu Kyi, the world's only in prison Nobel Peace Prize laureate and the struggle for human rights in Burma. There are people all over this country and all over the world who still don't know about her. And that's why I say it's so important that we have people in different places walking with her picture. I hope this year myself to be in a number of places. And I want you to know that wherever I go, if it's in March, if it's in May, if it's in January, Dono San Suu Kyi's picture goes with me. We are one in the same. She is in my heart and you are also in my heart. So that picture will go with me and I will share with people to continue informing them about this amazing woman who continues to share, to stand up in such a courageous way on behalf of all the Burmese people. What you are doing here today, we are honoring many of those brothers and sisters who are no longer with us in the physical body. People like Menkonai and Kokoji, and all the students that had the courage to stand up with them in 1988. And the 3,000 people, men, women, and children that were massacred on that day. But not only are we honoring them, we are also honoring and we need to honor the young monk that was tortured and murdered to death. You see it in the documentary, Burma Vijay. There is a picture of a young monk floating in the water upside down and you can see on his skull the way they tortured him. Let us never forget that picture. That picture will remain in my mind forever. Let us make sure that that young monk did not die in vain. The world saw the military dictatorship that is unbelievably brutal and repressive they were the ones who were killing Buddhist monks. It was, not the, it was not the Burmese people. Let there be no doubt that the Burmese people still hold in very high regard and respect and love the Burmese monks. Because it is the Burmese monks and sisters who are their spiritual guides. So I want to say something that concerns the Burmese monks. During the Saffron Revolution two summers ago, you began to walk with your bows upside down. And of course, the military dictatorship showed their most ugly face once again. They started torturing and imprisoning and killing the Buddhist monks. 
One thing they cannot force you to do, they cannot force you to turn that bowl upside down again. You don't have to beg them ever again, not after what they showed you in the world, not after what they did to you during the Saffron Revolution. Your bowl should remain upside down. The people will support you because the people love you and look up to you and they respect you. You will never go hungry because you, the people will reach out to you. This is one way that you can fight back and that you can answer what they did to all your Buddhist brothers and sisters two summers ago in which all the world saw in front of them. So remember, that bowl was up at one time and then you turned it over again. And what I'm saying now is be committed enough, be disciplined enough to say we must keep that bowl down. Never again should we go to the military dictatorship and beg them for food. The people will provide for us. God will provide for us. We will never have to go hungry. I say to all of you, all of you here today, your children are watching you today, and they see that you have not forgotten about your people in Burma who have such tremendous courage in spite of all the suffering that they continue to endure. They know in their hearts, mommy and daddy, even though they are in this country and raising a family and working hard, but they have not forgotten about those they left behind. This is a great example because your children will continue to follow in that example. I also want to say something before I forget about the back of my shirt. The back of this shirt says, no election in 2010. We will not support this election. We want them to honor the election from 1988, which they lied and said they would and they never have. But what I'm saying is, even when 2010 comes, if at the last minute other people choose not to take the same position that you have all agreed on, don't let that make you end up fighting each other in a violent fashion because this will only defeat you more. You must save your energy for the real struggle, which is to keep fighting and keep struggling so that someday Burma can join the international community as it was one time during the prime ministership of UNU after independence. Burma was not always the Burma it is today. Burma was a very different country at that time, highly respected among the international community. And let us hope and pray that someday Burma will again be that kind of a community. I want to take a note from our president, Brother Barack Hussein Obama. He said during the campaign, every time they tried to divide him and cause divisiveness along racial lines, dividing the people of black and white, Hispanic, Asian, he said, no, 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 no. We are not black American. We are not white American. We are not Asian American. We are all Americans. This is not about red stacks, redneck states, or blue states. This is about the American state. So I want to say to you, every time someone says to you, you will never be free because you are fighting in a nonviolent revolution. But I want you and all of them to know it takes tremendous courage and discipline to maintain nonviolence in the face of violence. I know a little bit about that myself because I came out of the civil rights movement in the 60s when Dr. Martin Luther King taught all of us to commit yourself to nonviolence. So you go to a workshop and you talk it out and you play roles, but then when the real thing comes and you are confronted with violence, how many of you have that tremendous courage to main nonviolence? We saw two summers ago again, as in 1988, many monks were encouraging the people, don't fear death. 
try to rise above your fear of death as we must all because some people will still die in this revolution so we want to all honor all of them who had the courage and who reached that level of consciousness they did not any longer fear death and as a result they are not with us anymore in the physical body but they, but we honor their sacrifice so every time someone tells you no you can't you must say oh yes we can we will and we must because you in burma have a very unique opportunity you in Burma have the unique opportunity to show the world once again, as Gandhi did in India, that if you are tremendously disciplined, if you believe deeply in your heart, and if you come together in a very concerted, strong effort all around the world, you can be successful in a non-violent revolution. You can show your children and future generations and all people struggling to be free around the world that yes, nonviolence is a very powerful weapon. It is not a weapon of the weak, believe me. It doesn't take any strength and courage to shoot someone in the back or to torture them to death. But it takes tremendous courage to maintain violence when you are faced with that kind of violence. So I say to you, my Burmese brothers and sisters, wherever I go, remember that I'm with you, not just today or tomorrow or next week or next month. I'm with you for the rest of my life, my brothers and sisters. I'm ready to walk with you. I'm ready to go to jail with you. I'm ready to give my life with you, my brothers and sisters, whatever it takes, because someday, Someday, I believe in my heart deeply, Burma will be free, Aung San Suu Kyi will be free, and then we will all be able to celebrate that day. So I say to you, peace and love, may God bless you. Doye, 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 free Burma, free Aung San Suu Kyi. Free on San Suu Kyi, free Burma. Doye, doye, peace.
Yeah! 